Welcome back to Social Media for Your Business Online. This is Victor Campos. When last we left off, we were looking at the anatomy of the Twitter screen. Now, these are the various screens of Twitter on a regular web browser. You'll see slightly different screens if you're looking at Twitter on your iPhone or Android or iPad or Nexus tablet of your Windows phone or Windows tablet. You may see different sorts of screens, but they all are related. At this point, I want to go into a deep dive of the settings found on Twitter. Wherever I've ended up in my Twitter screen, I can always go back to my profile and settings icon and go to settings. There are several screens listed here, and I'm going to go into detail about these various settings. These are things that we often don't think about. We simply use Twitter. But we're doing ourselves a disservice if we don't take a look behind the scenes of what we've got in our settings. You can see here one of the first things under the account section of settings. Here's where you can change your username. Your username is your Twitter address. So if I wanted to change this to something else like Victor's Bakery, if it was available, I would be able to claim it. If not, I might choose something else. I added an email address early on when I created the account, but I haven't confirmed it. I want to do that at some point. And I can add more email addresses so that I can log in with an email address. You can change the language of your Twitter to many different languages, apparently including the lolcats language. That's pretty funny. Check your time zone to make sure it's right. Your content, you're going to focus on content of whatever country you'd like. I've got United States. This is based on my web browser. Tweet media. Do or do not inform me before showing me media that may be sensitive. A Twitter user may mark their tweets as having sensitive material. News reports, for example, may show violent encounters. At the moment, I am going to be notified that that has sensitive content. Twitter is providing a trigger warning about negative things that may be harmful to me. If I don't want that preemptive warning, I can turn it off. For business purposes, you probably do not want it on because for business purposes, you want to view content in a business manner. If your own content is sensitive, this is you activating the trigger warning for other people. Again, thinking in terms about your business, most likely you don't want to mark that because most likely you are not promoting sensitive content. What is sensitive content? You'll need to decide what that is based on community standards. Video content now is very commonly shared on most social networks. And what we see here is that videos will automatically start to play on Twitter. Further, it says, videos will automatically play on the timeline. Regardless of your video autoplay settings, videos, GIFs, and Vines will always autoplay in moments. So if you're over on the moments screen, they will always automatically play. But if you're on the home screen, do you want the videos to play yes or no automatically? The sound will be off until you choose to hear it, but the videos will begin to play. You can choose how you'd like to run that. Twitter is a constantly updating stream of content. The great thing about Twitter is that there's always something new to look at. The bad thing about Twitter is that there's always something new to look at, meaning that this home screen will perhaps always feel that it's getting away from you. You can never catch up. So there's an option here. Show me the best tweets first. Based on various factors, based on the Twitter algorithm and your own usage of Twitter, Twitter may decide these tweets here might be more valuable to you, so we'll show them first. If you don't want that, if you simply want everything to be shown in chronological order no matter when it happens, you can turn it off. These are the tweets of accounts that you are following. Once you get good at Twitter and you've tweeted hundreds or thousands of times, 
you have an archive of tweets that you may request to download to keep a copy for yourself. And if eventually you decide, well, Twitter's not for me, I'm going to go focus on Periscope, you can deactivate the account. And for this class, as I said, I'm creating this testing educational account, which I will delete eventually, and you may want to if you'd like. And there it is under your settings, general settings, deactivate my account. If you make any changes to this screen, you want to click Save. Next is Security and Privacy. Do you want extra protection when you log in? Cybersecurity is a very important topic nowadays, and we hear many examples of people's accounts getting hacked. That often happens because we have very weak passwords or very weak login credentials. So if you activate both of these features, it'll be harder for people to hack into your account. Now you have to balance convenience with security. The more security you have an account, oftentimes the less convenient it is. The more convenience you have an account, the less secure it is. So if you have the, both of these off, it's more convenient for you to log into your account. Therefore, it's less secure. If you've got both of these on, it's more secure, but less convenient to log in. You need to decide what you want to do there. Personally, I opt for more security than convenience. I don't want my accounts hacked. I don't want the accounts of my clients hacked. So I often have them very secure and very inconvenient to log in. But once you get used to the inconvenience, it won't be a problem. There's a section on privacy, photo tagging. People can share photos on Twitter and then tag that you, that your business is in the photo. At the moment, allow anyone to tag me in a photo. For business purposes, I would leave it like that. Let people create the dialogue with you. Let people post a photo of that product of yours and tag you in it. You will get the notification. You will be, a, be made aware of a, of, a, of a customer that likes your stuff. You will then reply to that customer. You will then follow that customer. And that customer may then further follow you on Twitter and buy more of your products. That's the best case scenario, of course. If you instead turn it into the monologue about do not allow anyone to tag me, well, you've cut off an, you've cut off an avenue of interaction. And really, only the biggest companies have success being a monologue. In the middle, you have only allow people I follow to tag me. If you've previously followed an account, then they can tag you in a photo. Choose what you'd like. I would recommend the default. Tweet privacy. Protect my tweets. If you turn that on, no one can see your tweets until you approve that they can follow you. The problem with that for a public business is that then it's an extra hoop for people to jump through. And unfortunately, people are very lazy nowadays, especially online. If it takes one more click than I wanted to, people won't do it. If I needed to click one extra time to see a tweet, um, I may do it once, I may do it twice, and then after that, never mind. So I don't recommend you make your tweets private. A possibility why you want privacy is that you want to create an exclusive Twitter presence that you need to approve followers. But that's going to be more effort. And you're probably already running your business. And now you've also got to deal with being like a bouncer. You can add locations to your tweets. The purpose of this for a business is that if I'm in the shop on Main Street, if I'm, on Victor, if I'm in Victor's Bakery on Main Street, and I'm tweeting photos of our delicious cupcakes, I could attach a location. I could attach a pin on a map so that when someone sees that delicious cupcake, they 
see the location, and then are compelled to visit the location in the real world and buy that delicious cupcake. If a real location doesn't apply for your business, obviously then don't activate that. This is the spot that we saw early on in the creation of the account. Let people find me by my email or phone number, yes or no. If people have your email address from your website but they don't know your Twitter account, they can search via your email and find you on Twitter. Would you like to connect your address book of various email addresses like uh, Gmail or Outlook? You can do that here. Here's the spot again about Twitter, twi Taylor Twitter based on my recent website visits. I'm running my browser in private mode, so it's not tracking me. But you may have the ability to turn that on or off. Promoted content. Taylor ads based on information shared by ad partners. Now, you're not going to avoid getting ads on Twitter. You're not going to avoid getting ads on Facebook, YouTube, etc. But maybe at least show me ads related to content of my business. The purpose of that, one purpose of that, is for inspiration to have me thinking about what should I share next. Because as we'll see later on, as I'll reiterate for every network, you want to share stuff on Twitter and all the networks on a regular basis. For example, at least one tweet per week. Better yet, one tweet per day. That's a lot of work. So one tweet per week is your goal. And if you're seeing what others are tweeting, that may give you inspiration for you to tweet something new. You created the Twitter account, but you can have other people also manage the Twitter account. That's Twitter for teams. Allow anyone to add me to their team. Allow, only allow people I follow to add me to their team. Do not allow anyone to add me to their team. If you want other people to help you manage this account, these are the settings. Most likely, you will have it set to only allow people I follow to add me to their team. You have already a mutual connection and then you will be able to have other people help you manage this account or you manage other accounts. Direct messages. Would you like people to start a private conversation with you, yes or no? The default is no, not until you've connected with them first. And probably that's what you want because if you have open direct messages, any crazy person can send you any direct message over to your messages screen. And if you'd like to see when people read your message and vice versa, you can activate that. So if you made any changes, go ahead and save, and then we'll look at password. This one's pretty easy. If you want to change your password, here it is cards and shipping. Twitter is slowly rolling out the ability to purchase content directly from a tweet. The big companies may have that like Amazon and Sears and such, but us little guys probably we don't have that yet. But this is where you can manage a credit card so you can easily buy something via a tweet. And if you've ordered stuff previously, it'll show up under order history. If you add your mobile device, you will be able to use another dimension of Twitter. You can send text messages to Twitter. Personally, I don't really think that's that useful at all. I would rather use the full-fledged Twitter app on my phone, which then you can download from there. Email notifications. One of the frustrating things, I think, about Twitter when you first set this up is that suddenly you're going to get inundated with lots of emails. Personally, I don't like that. And most likely you'll see that you don't like it either. So one way is to simply turn off all email notifications. 
that may be too draconian. You still may want to get emails about some topics. So you can read all of this by yourself. I won't look at every single one of these. You can look at these and see which of these emails do I want to get. For example, email me when someone likes my tweet. Tailored for you or by anyone. So as you use Twitter, as Twitter learns more about your business, it will send you emails that it thinks you want to see. If you set that to, for example, by anyone, you will get an email whenever anyone likes your tweet. Personally, I really don't see much value at all in any of these because under the notifications screen that we'll see in a moment, we will be notified of things, but I don't really need these to take up my inbox space because you're also going to get things such as email me with top tweets and stories sent periodically. Who knows what that period is? You can set it to daily or weekly, but you'll get emails from Twitter that say, hey, you haven't logged into Twitter recently, check out what was tweeted. You may get emailed about news about Twitter products and features, suggestions for recommended accounts. Honestly, I think you're going to get way too many emails than you really want. So this one really I'm going to highly recommend. Just turn all of these off. You can turn them on again later. Because more importantly, under notifications, you can filter your tweets here. Only get the tweets of accounts that you follow. This is how accounts such as Justin Bieber or Miley Cyrus or The President this is how they use Twitter because they have so many people tweeting at them. They want to focus on people they've already forged a connection with. So if you activate only people you follow, your notifications will be a little more manageable. That's a problem you probably don't have at the moment, so I wouldn't worry about it. Quality filter is a way to help prevent spam and trolls on Twitter. Now, personally, I have to say, Twitter is one of my favorite social networks. I've been using it for several years, personally and professionally. But I have seen the quality of Twitter interactions really plummet in the last few years, especially in 2016. So Twitter is attempting to keep it a little bit more civil with a quality filter. If you go off to learn more, it'll explain that low quality accounts may be prevented from interacting with you. Low quality accounts include very new accounts, accounts that are tweeting spam, accounts that are harassing and so forth. So if you'd like a better Twitter experience, probably the quality Twitter, the quality filter will be helpful to you. And we'll see later we can mute accounts and block accounts and mute specific keywords. This is all in an attempt to keep it more civil. Next under web notifications, well, I turned off all emails. That means I'm going to be kept in the dark? No, that means that you will pay attention to your notifications screen on Twitter more intently. Notify me when my tweets are retweeted? Yes. When someone likes my tweets? Yes. When I get a reply or I mention in a tweet? Yes. When I'm followed by someone new? Yes. Basically all of these yes. Let me know on the website when something happens. Don't clutter up my inbox. Put it in the notifications. And personally, I would recommend when you're starting off, you want to say by anyone on all of these. You never know who's interacting with you. And if it's filtered by, tail by being tailored, you might not see everything that you really needed to see. So when you make any changes, make sure you save those changes. Next is find friends. So if you connect your address books here, you will be notified of who else you know exists on Twitter. The pros and cons of this are that if you know 20 people that are on Twitter, you may follow them, 
and they may follow you back. So you've got 20 followers. More followers is the possibility of more sales. For Victor's Bakery, the more followers I get, the more possibility I have of someone clicking my link where I'm selling something. If I'm a nonprofit organization, the more followers I have could relate to the more volunteers that I get. Now, unfortunately, it's not a one-to-one -one relationship in that 100 followers will mean 100 sales. Oftentimes, it's very low. 100 followers could mean two sales, one sale. Okay, so if I've got 500 followers, I could have more sales. If I've got 1,000 followers, more sales. 100,000 followers, even more sales. If you want to be conservative, 1% of your followers often are the most active or real in that they will take the time to buy your product, donate to your organization, read your blog posts, etc. So you want to build followers. Therefore, if you search your contacts, that could help you get the ball rolling to start to build followers. The big negative of this is, are you going to build your business on the backs of your friends and family? How many times are they going to put up with another tweet about what you're selling, about your giving away, about the donations you're soliciting? So be careful about this. It may or may not be valuable to you, but you could try to connect with friends and family to build an audience. If you've muted accounts, they will be listed here. Basically, if someone is harassing your business on Twitter, you can block or mute them. Muting is like temporarily hiding them. Out of sight, out of mind. You're not paying attention to them anymore. You can easily turn it off. The much harsher blocked is that if you've blocked an account, they cannot see anything that you're doing on Twitter anymore. If you've muted an account, they can see what you're doing on Twitter, your tweets and your photos and videos, but you will not see their harassing messages. If you've blocked an account, you will not see their harassing messages and they will not see your content at all. We've also got muted words. If there are words that you no longer want to see on your notifications, if someone has started some sort of chain of replies and somehow roped you into it, you can mute that. Apps. If your Twitter account is connected to other accounts, you may see throughout the web the feature sign in with Twitter or sign up with Twitter. Well, that's that you've got Twitter vouching for you on the other website. You can see who you've used Twitter to vouch for from this screen and revoke any access if you choose to. Widgets. This is pretty advanced. You can create a widget of a profile, your collections and search, and lists and all of that to embed onto your website. You can embed the Twitter search in your website so that it's a live search. Your Twitter data. This has some very sensitive information, so I'm not going to load this screen, but this will include where you've logged in from, when you've logged in, and other important features and ways to help further protect your account. And finally, accessibility has a sort of valuable but neglected setting that very few people know about that I will tell you about that I think is very important if you're going to run Twitter the right way. We have under accessibility at the moment one option. Compose image descriptions. Adds the ability to describe images for the visually impaired. So this is section 508 accessibility. This is part of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Nowadays, the search engines like Google, Bing, and Yahoo really put an emphasis on websites and content that is accessible. It stems from these government regulations that every government entity, every government website, should be accessible by all people regardless of disability. So, if I have a vision impairment, 
a government website should still be accessible to me, you know, in terms of large type or as an audio version. If I have motor skill impairments, if I can't, if I don't have the full range of motion, I should be able to use a government website with my particular apparatus. That's for government websites. Google and the search engines have decided that that's a good idea for every website. So in terms of search engine optimization, if I want my website to rank well on Google, if I want my website to rank well on Bing, I should also make my website accessible. And that's a deeper topic for a different class. But one basic thing that we can do on our websites is, if there's a picture on our website, we should have alt text. We should have alternative text that describes the picture. That's out of the scope of our class here. But if I've got a picture of a product on my homepage, I should have a description of that picture because people that are blind can still browse websites. People that have a complete blindness or some other visual impairment can still use websites because they have most likely a computer or software that will read the screen to them. Once the screen is read to them using their special keyboard, they can then click links buy products, and do any of the things that a non-impaired person can do. Twitter now has the ability to compose descriptions or alt text for pictures. This is a simple sentence description of a picture. So if I share a picture on Twitter, I can also attach a description to it. And the importance of this and the reason that I highly recommend that you activate this is to reach more of an audience. I guarantee most of your competitors don't know about this on Twitter and therefore they are not reaching an audience that you could be reaching. Why exclude an audience that wants to pay for your product, that wants to donate to your organization, that wants to book your band? Why exclude a segment of the population? Why not make your content accessible? It's a requirement for government entity websites. But Walmart is accessible, Amazon is accessible, and Twitter here is giving you the option to be accessible to reach more of an audience. It's an extra step, which will become second nature once we do it, but it will help you reach a grateful audience that others are not reaching. I'm going to tweet a picture of a delicious cupcake, and I'm going to compose a description that says, delicious cupcake for sale, or something that will really explain the picture to the blind user for them to click and buy the cupcake. If I didn't put a description, their computer would simply tell them, image. But if I put a description, their computer will tell them, image, description, cupcake, for sale, click here. And then they'll click the button and buy your cupcake. So I highly recommend you activate this option, and we'll see how to use it later. Remember to save. There we go. These are the settings of Twitter. These are very neglected screens that you should check up on once in a while. They add new features once in a while. And I've given some opinions about what are some good options to set. Next, what's coming up is, well, we need to start tweeting and we need to start to build followers. What's the point of having a Twitter account, a Facebook account, etc., if no one is paying attention to you? Coming up on the next videos, we'll talk about creating content, effective content, and getting followers. This has been Victor Campos.